fourteenth day of April twenty twenty four. I almost said twenty twenty six. What the hell, Dana? <laughs> you can call in at seven oh nine five eight nine four four oh six or not. You can, you won't, but you can. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go again. Don't forget to go do some clicking. Clicking. What do we got for everybody tonight? Um. Picture to your left, that would be. Every nuclear power plant on the planet should be surrounded for a thousand miles by one ton bags of radioactive fallout. They're always hemorrhaging radiation. And this is the ghost towns in Japan. So these are, most of the pictures you're going to see are pictures that I created with artificial intelligence. I'm slowly trying to, well not slowly I guess, but I'm trying to wrap my mind around how to do it. And so I've been a busy little naughty boy. Busy. <laughs> I got plans for the nuclear industry. Going to see coming. Congress must investigate corruption in the nuclear industry. And Congress is the one that are corrupt. They're the ones that are enabling the nuclear industry to do the genocide that they're committing, to produce the misery and agony. The only reason they're getting away with it is because Congress lets them get away with it. <coughs> Let me see here. I got a poll for everybody tonight somewhere. Calling all polls. Uh, if you're just joining the show or if you've been sitting on the stream, refresh your page because I just changed all the security codes two minutes before I went live, so you might have a problem conflicting with your browser. It seems to happen when I change the security codes. Should the world ban United Nations and the International Atomic Energy Agency, which are one and the same, but I wanted to point out United Nations in particular, and replace them with humans that are not evil, degenerate scum? And everybody kind of gets it at this stage, if you're around here for a little bit, that United Nations is not united at all. They're military-industrial complex, and their intention is to take over Earth. The nuclear goat, that would be me, unfortunately. Congress turns out to be your night biggest night. Now, we've done a seven-and-a-half-hour video on Thursday, Ugh. and I had to wear headphones for seven and a half hours, and it was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> the next day, my ears were just screwed up the entire day. Uh, I was surprised how exhausting it was, but we slowly, methodically went through seven and a half hours of a subcommittee hearing, and it was totally scripted. And you can't have a future with that going on. So your politics are not mostly corrupt. It's, it was 100% corrupt from what we've seen. In their zeal to achieve a carbon-free environment, Democrats have done a big turnaround. It doesn't matter. Left, right, far left, far right, extreme left, extreme right, denialistic, the Pol Pot, the Maoists, the Clazies. They're all, they're all in each other's... Let's put it this way, when one party has a birthday, they invite everybody from the other parties, they're cronies. Some states are moving as fast as they can to reactivate idled reactors. And 2022, Congress passed the Inflation Relief Act to grant $30 billion. So Inflation Relief Act, and then you're given $30 billion away, is not an Inflation Relief Act. It's an advantage, right? And then they gave nothing to the geothermal, which could replace all nuclear, gas, oil, and coal, and wind and solar. So these are pictures that I create. I'll let you know, uh, typically, I created the picture. 
So I created this picture. Um, I was looking for a nuclear disaster, and this is what it gave me on a number of different tries, this kind of scenario. And I think that what they were trying to tell you is how big and vast these disease factories actually are. These are disease factories. And the only thing, radiation, because there's nothing on the planet that has an immune system that can defend against radioactive fallout is the problem. Nuclear power takes off, meeting the growth in global electricity demand. But that's not true. Nuclear power didn't take off. It's a complete... It's a complete lie. Um, last year, nuclear went backwards. It lost 1.7 gigawatts, basically, basically two large nuclear reactors. Whereas renewables advanced to 507 gigawatts, which is equal to close to 700 large nuclear power plants, or 2,500 small modular reactors. And it didn't take 15 years or 20 years or 25 years. It took 12 months for renewables to curb stuff. And like uh, the total nuclear, nuclear capacity worldwide is about 364 gigawatts. And well, actually, minus 1.7 gigawatts. And uh, the total capacity just in 12 months of renewable was 507. So you got a total of 364 uh, gigawatts of nuclear. But last year, just, you know, commodities have skyrocketed. And so it's very expensive to produce this uh, renewables, but it still was almost double the total of uh, reactors in uh, gigawatts well not well one and a half anyway right in 12 months and artificial intelligence is learning because i'm teaching it <laughs> so every time he sees one of these pictures that's me training artificial intelligence to understand nuclear because <laughs> that's why it works right because artificial intelligence doesn't have the bias. It, it's still going to absorb it. It's still like, oh, really? It's still it's still absorbing it, see? And look at this. And, and this, if, if you actually collected all the radioactive fallout from just Fukushima's meltdowns, this, it would look like this right around the entire planet, in a, in a, like if it was a highway. That's what it would look like on both sides of the highway around the entire planet. And Mr. Proceedings of United Nations, who we got a poll about tonight that we need to get rid of these people. These are creeps. These are, um, these are like, holy smokes, these are completely out of control organizations that have no sovereignty over any countries but have infiltrated your universities, your medias, and your governments and have now have turned them into zombies. A significant milestone was reached as 22 nations came together to 22 out of 195. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Out of the 195 United Nations countries, only 22 came together to endorse an agreement aimed at advancing nuclear energy initiatives. Here's one of them. You can't advance nuclear energy because nuclear so complicated, so stupid, but uh, ultimately it's a genocide machine. Almost all nuclear power plants and dumps are surrounded by farms. Slovenia, to start building a nuclear waste disposal facility in May, look what they're showing you, farmland. Why, why are nuclear power plants and nuclear waste dumps surrounded by farmlands? Because it's easier to poison you that way, and it's easy to move the radioactive emissions away from the site regularly, and they don't have to do it. And so if you look up nuclear power plants, almost all of them are surrounded by farms. And every time you see these one-ton bags, think of that as a one-ton bag of radioactive fallout. Japan picked up 30 million and gave up. It was just they couldn't keep up, but it was only 3% of the land. Slovenia Agency for Radioactive Waste Management plans to start the construction of a radioactive waste disposal facility at the Verbena site next month. Well, they're going to start it, but it could take 30 years for them to build something. That's the, 
the one consensus we see with nuclear is n nuclear is not slow, it's, it's just crawls. <clears throat> How do you like this stuff here, folks? Is this stuff okay? <laughs> Excluding nuclear industry, because they're not going to like it. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. And so, just this, uh, this is what it should, like, if you took all the bags that Fukushima picked up, this would be equal to about one quarter away around the entire planet. You could do this exact depiction with one ton bags side by side, about one quarter of the way around the entire planet, which was only 3%. The total value of the project, Slovenia, including the construction infrastructures, serving the site as well as all the necessary procedures leading to the construction itself is estimated to be 200 million euros. What are they going to dump it in? Open pitch or something? Because they're going to, 90% of the money goes to administration, right? Which leaves 10%, and 10% is not going to be enough to dig all the deal with the nuclear waste. Construction is expected to be completed by 2027 to be followed by a trial run. In early, and trial run is something you, you don't want to have anything to do with. In the early 2028, the first operational phase will commence to store low and medium level radioactive waste of Slovenia's sole nuclear power disease factory, the Crisco, as well as waste from medicine, industry, and research activities. And if you took all the bags in Japan and you done this to them, that, that's what it would look like across the entire country of Japan. Or actually, uh, or United States or Canada. If you want to... If you took all of Japan's bags and stacked them side by side along a highway, you can go right across the entire country. This is what it would look like on both sides of the roads. It's so hard for people to comprehend 30 million one-ton bags. Nuclear medicine, and the reason I'm doing all of this right now is because of uh, Calm Down Charlie stalking me and harassing me. You pissed me off. You pushed me so far. This industry has pushed me so far now. D this is going to be a daily thing from here on because I'm not taking it anymore. I'm tired of being harassed by this industry. I've never done nothing to nobody. I'm not a bad person for going out and researching the marine species die off. Yet they claimed I was a Demon. I was the worst person on the planet for going out on research expeditions and documenting, doing species counts. Bastard Dana. Nuclear medicine is big pharma's new target in cancer race. Nuclear medicine is your biggest nightmare. Nuclear, period, actually. But nuclear medicine is the last thing you... There is no nuclear medicine. There is no nuclear therapy. Your body has no autoimmune trigger to defend against this. See, that statement on its own means that it's nasty, right? Because your body needs to defend against it. Your body doesn't have to defend against potassium or magnesium or iron or anything else natural, stardust. It has to defend against the invader, which is anthropogenic man-made nuclear. Now, if you took all the bags from Japan, the 30 million one-ton bags, and stacked them on both sides of a road, that road will go right around the planet just like this more than once. But the Fisher story now is not even melted down. There is no bags. There's 105,000 sites like that. Nuclear medicine is big nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. And when you go to AI and you ask them for nuclear accidents or nuclear spills or nuke, this is what it gives you, look. <laughs> but it's like a banana and a potato chip, right? According to the TV, the degenerate TV. Therapeutics. There is, there is no therapeutics. It destroys your cells, all the cells in your body, all the chromosomes, the DNA. Your blood, the essence, your essence, it destroys it. 
She's a pickup in investor's interest. Biotech works on injected radioactive drugs, and that just infuriates me. It infuriates me to, to think about all the hospitals injecting radioactive material into humans and women and children and babies and men and elderly. It's so it's so evil. Like, if you understand the nuances of nuclear, how can you sit in silence? Just, I can't comprehend it. As Pharma, your biggest nightmare, spends billions in acquisitions of startups developing new ways to harm you with radiation in the fight against cancer, which the radiation causes the cancer. This is what he picked up 30 million one-ton bags in Japan. It causes heart problems and liver problems and lung problems and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline. It causes endless Ill illnesses and diseases. <laughs> I was trying to talk as I drink my cup of tea. <clears throat> la 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 la. There we go. Yeah, uh, now I've done entire presentations on studies of radiation injuries from radiation therapy and. Uh, it's the stuff that gives me nightmares whenever I do those shows. So it was really hard to get artificial intelligence to do the nuclear power first. Right? Um, so you have to create all you have to create most of the scenery and then nuclear gets put into the background. Or then you can slip nuclear plant in there. But you can't uh, use the words like nuclear power plant or, or nuclear generating station or something like that. The artificial intelligence doesn't want to create those pictures, right? So you got to create everything else first and then you put nuclear. You, you can figure out a way to get nuclear in the background. Boomer bust for the future of the U.S. nuclear plower, nuclear plower, not power, Dana, plower. So, they, like, the first plant in 30 years, right? There was another plant, um, Watts Bar. It took 44 years to get it running. So we don't really count that. And so it was over 30 years since the last nuclear plant was built in the United States. Which was, and that plant, Plant Vocal, uh, you're looking at around $36 billion. And that's not the final number, by the way. $36 billion, which is enough geothermal to produce about four times that energy or five times that amount of gigawatts. And they would have had it up and running in a couple of years. Anybody could do it, right? But no, we're stuck with nuclear. Nu nothing's allowed to have beyond this planet now only nuclear. United Nations is making sure of that. So when you see these one-ton bags, every time you see these one-ton bags, remember there's 30 million, 30 million in Japan that they picked up, that they admit to. And that's enough for this depiction you see here, right around the entire planet at least once, from a single facility, from 3% of the land. So if you had it picked up 100%, then our worst nightmare is real. Well, this is our worst nightmare. This is just an unbelievable amount of radioactive fallout that they picked up. The U.S. commits to tripling nuclear power production by 2050, but how are they going to do that? Like, how, how the hell is America going to get another 200 nuclear power plants? You better get busy. <laughs> Because that's only 29 years away. It'll take them that long to get three or four made at the rate to do it. Plant Volto was about, what, 16 years or something. And it's far from complete. And it's four times the original estimate. Aligning with global efforts to combat climate change. But no, this was a United Nations, right, this military-industrial complex got a bunch of their cronies and said, yeah, we're going to triple nu nuclear. But again, nuclear is climate change. The reason we got 
the adverse conditions is because of 80 years of emissions into the ecosystem. Because gas, oil, and coal emissions are carbon. You can't have any species without carbon, right? This is a plutonium-239 dispersal. That model up there is based on 20 days after the tsunami and 16 days or 15 days after the last reactor detonated on the 16th, for instance, right? So that's 15 days later, that model up there. And this is 16 days later. This is April the 1st, 2011 model of plutonium-239. Now, all the animals and all the studies died from a single inhalation of plutonium. And they typically all had three tumors, the liver, the lungs, and the skeleton. And so if you're a small animal or mammal or a kid or something like that, you're, you're producing stem cells, a lot of stem cells because you're developing. And so this is the worst thing could happen to you. But what they, they discovered, they were saying in the studies on the dogs, 144 beagle dogs and beagle puppies, uh, was that you can si expect similar biological effects in humans with the same dose, right? But it turns out that humans' are, kidneys are 50 times less efficient than an animal's kidney at removing the plutonium. So I say we should stop using animals for these experiments and just use nuclear scientists. We don't really need them anymore. They haven't really been any benefit to us. And so they're, they're making it illegal to use it to do this to you. Why not make it illegal to do it to them? And why not say it should be exclusively go to the people in the nuclear industry? And we can have a nuclear scientist puppy mills breeding nuclear scientists and using them for studies to see how long it takes the tumors to kill them, right? I'm just, I'm just saying, we don't have to do it. I'm just saying it's probably a good idea. And by the way, that plume is pulsing energy almost at the speed of light every second. Think of the snowstorm, instead of covering the entire planet after 15 days or so, and it, it never stops snowing, the snow never goes away, the snow never melts, and, never, and the snow never stops falling. It's the sky. Every community, everywhere you go, is snow falling constantly. So instead of snow, it's, it's a radioactive isotope, and it's pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. Then now you now you're actually got it, right? Now you're there. Now you now you and I'll get some pictures of that. I'll actually get the artificial intelligence to cook me up some pictures of that actually tomorrow or tonight. That's a great idea. Good idea, Dana. <coughs> Let me put that in my little notepad here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea a lot. Note to self. <coughs> yep, AI picture of Fallout. Just bear with me. This is kind of important. Fallout. Pulsing energy. And I think I'll go to hell with it and make a hunter. That way we get a couple of real doozies. Make one hunter pictures. This week. Okay, here we go. Uka lot. Uh <coughs> Despite safety and zero emission benefits, there is no safety to nuclear because the, once you take some fuel out of the reactor core and put it in the fuel pool, it's still splitting atoms. The same atoms it was to boil water for a million homes in the containment is no longer in the containment. That's the pro problem with nuclear waste is it never stops splitting atoms into the ecosystem. And what, what that means though, is you have an invisible snowstorm from every reactor fuel pool each day, perpetual plumes, nonstop plumes from every fuel pool. And so the whole planet should kind of look like that. 
they pick up everything, start again. Despite safety and zero emission benefits, there is no such thing as zero emissions. Like you can't make power for a million homes and say there's zero emissions. Uh, every, every nuclear power plant needs two gas, oil, and coal plants to run it, right? Every nuclear power plant needs two gas, oil, and, oil and coal plants to run it. In fact, that should be the new small modular reactors. This is what they should look like, surrounded by millions of one-ton bigs. Despite safety and zero, they're not. They're never going to get the small modular reactors. They're um, despite safety and zero emission emission benefits. Building new new uh, new. Let me slow it down a second here. Building new nuclear reactor faces. Like what are they talking about? Building new nuclear reactors. In all honesty. Public skepticism, there's being pretty polite. The United States has big plans to expand its nuclear energy industry. We better get after it. The country already boasts the biggest nuclear fleet in the world, but they stopped building reactors after Three Mile Island. That was a concession that they made rather than shut down all reactors like they were supposed to do, right? Because Three Mile Islands polluted the whole country um, with a ridiculous amount of radiation. It was covered up by people like Lake Barrett and Arnie Gunnarsson. Have to excuse me, i got to drink my tea while it's still hot. The country already boasts the biggest number of fleet in the world. Uh, however, the United States nuclear energy sector has been neglected and underfunded. No, it's not underfunded. What are you talking about? It's the, it's the best funded energy source in the United States, period. And they steal the money, right? And then, you know, like if you look at Hanford, it's, uh, what is, I don't know the exact number, but it's over $300 billion they spent on it trying to clean it up. Do you expect at least another $700 billion over the next few decades? And expect it's going to take at least uh, 300 years to clean up the site. I mean, they dumped $1.4 million 300,000 gallon barrels worth of radiation into the soil is around 450,000, 450 billion gallons, which is equal to an aquarium six feet wide, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet of uh, nuclear waste that is splitting atoms. It was dumped into the soil right alongside the Columbia River. Let me go back one second. However, the United States nuclear energy sector is neglected under funding. Many of the nation's reactors are scheduled to retire in the near future. And they're not trying to replace them. They're trying to get rid of you, basically, by poisoning your water, your food, and your air. At last fall's Constipated Party 28, otherwise known as Constipated Party 28, World Climate Action Summit, the 28th conference of the parties to UN, it's the conference of parties, right? 28 year is basically what it means. But look at the name that they actually got attached to it, the World Climate Action Summit, the 28 conference of the parties to the United Nations. Frame convention for, framework convention on climate change. And what they done, what that was all about is 28 years of maneuvering countries and they taken over your planet. They've, they've used this narrative as like they're the savior when they're, they're the, nothing but the most evilest organization we've ever seen. They're truly the worst unelected, unappointed officials we've ever heard tell of. The United States is one of more than 20 countries to cooperate to launch the declaration to triple nuclear energy. Again, like you can't triple, you can't triple nuclear in 29 years. This is desperation. First off, <clears throat> like I think about twenty five percent of all the reactors worldwide will shut down over this next decade. You can't even replace that. And you had you got all the money, all the monetary, you got all the authority, all the equipment, you got everything you could ever dream of to do the job, and you can't even get a single reactor up and running in fourteen or fifteen years. 
and most of the companies end up going bankrupt, destroys it. For decades, nuclear energy deployment has dipped in the nations around the world. There's a polite way of saying it's friggin' dying. In the wake of high-profile nuclear disasters like Three Mile Island and Chernobyl and the Fukushima, but while these incidents have loomed large in public consciousness, large, the world has no concept. They haven't loomed large in the public's conscience. Well, that's, I guess that's true. It's, it's there, but the average, if you ask the average person, they don't know what Chernobyl is. And they certainly don't know what Fukushima is. And Three Mile Island is some documentary where it all, it all worked out, didn't it? That's what people will generally say. Every time you see these bags, now these, it's obviously, this is not a real picture, right? Uh, um, but it's actually, what happened is actually real. He did pick up 30 million one-ton bags. Nuclear power actually remains one of the safest forms of power generation. Like, what are you talking about? Don't be a clown, a clown. Nuclear is not safe. Uh, the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation to the ecosystem 24 hours a day. And critically, it yields no carbon emission. So 30 million one-ton bags of radiation from just a single site is not considered car How much carbon or how much energy is used to produce 30 million bags? <laughs> how much energy is used to pick up those bags? How much energy does it take to transport them bags? How much energy does it take to deal with them for a million years? So nuclear power is safe, only that is not. And this is a good depiction. This is what, if you took all the bags from Fukushima and wrapped them right around the planet, and you had a highway that went straight around the entire planet, this is what it would look like. A carbon-free, beloved nuclear disease factory. I like to thank Charlie, Calm Down Charlie, for inspiring me to make all of these pictures, by the way. Bless your heart, Calm Down Charlie. You're my hero, man. <laughs> in fact that's calm down Charlie right there he's a non-binary uh, person he's, he's not male he's not a female he's a thing we, we affectionately describe him as calm down Charlie who's inspired me to create all of these pictures I now have over 700 thank you calm down Charlie and every time that I hear from him I'll create another thousand or two but I got to create at least 105,000, 150,000 pictures like this to encompass the storage uh, areas that after Fukushima, they had 150,000 sites of one ton bags. 150,000 sites of one ton bags. 150,000. So there should be at least 150,000 pictures out there. Let's put it that way. Which in my Calculator says I got to produce 150,000 pictures to tell that story, right? Because we, we don't have access to them, so I got to create my own pictures. And this is only possible because Calm Down Charlie has finally driven me nuts. Yeah, and by the way, his shirts on my site are the best selling shirts I've got. It's unbelievable how good those shirts are selling. Apparently, there's a lot of people out there that don't like Calm Down Charlie. It was the first nuclear plant to come online on American soil since 1993, and the first to begin construction since the 1970s. So f almost 50 years since the last nuclear plant started construction until Plant Voldo came online, or started building, right? That's crazy. There is no nuclear renaissance. And they're not building any nuclear plants in America right now. How are you going to get 200 more nuclear plants if you're not even started right now? How's that going to work? Anybody? You can call in and tell me. 709-589-4406. And if you stacked all the one-ton bags up that Japan alone got... This is just pittance. It doesn't even do it justice. Progress and, but it's totally, you know, totally carbon free. <laughs> 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 
progress and challenges in the back end of the nuclear fuel challenges. Look at him with the cherry blossom tree in the background. He probably took back to the Nuclear Energy Institute from Japan on top of that, right? Sadistic demons. Radioactive pollen. Uh, what they won't they won't stand like you see in that picture. What you won't see is them getting and buy all of these one-ton bags, this is a depiction of it, and having their picture taken. Progress and challenges. Well, I say there's a few. Now, this is what the future looks like because of nuclear. The air is not going to be fit to breathe. Radiation never goes away. At some point, you're going to reach saturation, saturation levels. And that took us no less than 80 years, and we're finally at it. Now the bacteria and the fungus, speaking of fungus, the bacteria and the fungus now is being wiped out so the ground doesn't even soak up water anymore, and we're having flash floods worldwide post-Fukushima, which is part of the climate issue, right? Yeah, they should uh, just build uh, walls around the planet, so if you took, if you took uh, Hanford and you took all the waste that they dumped into the soil, you can build a wall like that, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet more than once that they just dumped into the soil. And then you're like, oh, we got 177 tanks there and buried in the ground. We, we got to, we got to put, we got to dehydrate it, release all the radiation to the environment. Whatever's left over, we're going to put in glass and store it for millions of years, right? These are degenerates. They, they really are degenerates. But, I mean, if someone wants to build a wall, Japan will give you all the bags you need. You can just stack them up, and there's your wall. And everybody tries to climb, it'll get sick and die. It's a perfect wall, right? It'll, and you got to reinforce the bags because they're only meant to last a couple of years because that's how smart this industry actually is. Shouldn't they spend all their time trying to design bags that don't break down in a couple of years? Imagine building 30 million containers for Fukushima, see? I really despise these people. They, they really are the worst that humanity has created. They're responsible for this. You can do this right around the entire planet at least once from Fukushima alone. Thanks to these stupid morons. That's the future for everybody right there. That pretty well sums it up. Just mechanical spiders keeping an eye on everybody because everything is radiated. Anybody says anything bad about nuclear, the spiders will show up. Participants of the regulators forum plenary meeting in Paris, France. So the goblins got together in France rather than Fukushima. See, this this is a real accurate picture. This one, um, you know, when I when I was designing it, again, uh, the green in the sky is because in the near future, that's that's a phenomenon known to happen at nuclear disasters. By the way. And so you got all these gammas and alphas and neutrons and betas are floating around in the air. And when they hit each other, they, they create this little uh, x-ray effect. It's, it's not a little, it's, very, it's a full body x-ray for every species. And so you got these gammas and alphas and neutrons and betas pulsing almost at the speed of light. They hit each other, they don't mingle, and they reflect off each other. And it's known as a breaking effect. And that breaking effect, is we call it x-rays, it's very harmful stuff. But uh, when it's concentrated, you'll get this like lightning effect up in the sky, of, and it's like a bluish green colors. So it's a very documented. Um, at some point, we're going to have to clean up the planet. And so we need to take a continent and just fill it up with one ton bags, basically because everything is radioactive from the nuclear industry, antibiotic man-made radiation. The event gathered more than 100 little sadistic demons from 23 member countries, as well as scumbags from the International Atomic Energy Agency, who, we happen to have a poll tonight, 
Should the world ban United Nations and the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is United Nations? They also have uh, IRPA, the ICRP, UNSCLEAR, and a whole bunch of other nuclear industries, and they all pretend that they've done independent studies, and then they all back each other up, but they're all the same monster, a.k.a. United Nations. Should everybody at United Nations be replaced then with humans that are not evil, degenerate scum? Because a lot of them don't even know they're evil, degenerate scums, but we know they're evil, degenerate scums, right? <clears throat> that's the future of humanity now. That's what, that's what it should look like right now. If we were sensible, we would start cleaning everything up, right? And it shouldn't take us more than a couple of hundred years, well, five or six hundred years or something. We're, we can clean it up, right? We're going to have to do it at some point. The Nuclear Energy Agency Radioactive Waste Management Committee. Nuclear and that's them right there, look. Huh? They stand around pretending they're humans, right? And they, they do this because there's a, there's a high suicide rate in that business. A lot of them can't sleep at night. And that's a pretty good, accurate depiction of what they got done to every country with nuclear. That's what it should, you should clean up everything in the country and stuff them in those one-ton bags, consider that or something. Yeah, and so this is accurate. If you've done this right around the entire planet, that would equal Fukushima's bags that they have uh, picked up already. And so if you had a highway like this right around the entire planet, uh, and these are one-ton bags, 2,200-pound bags, except for little baby bags right there. They're so cute, aren't they? And uh, you can have a double highway right around the entire planet blocked up with one-ton bags. But that, that was only 3% of the land in Fukushima Prefecture where they wanted people to move back to and the farms that they wanted people to grow food at, that's what the 30 million one-ton bags come from. So imagine if they actually had to try to clean it up. You're looking at at least 30 billion one-ton bags. 30 billion. For just Fukushima Prefecture, because you only clean up 3% of the single prefecture. But the food was banned by 55 countries from 14 prefectures, not just Fukushima. So you need to do this in every prefecture. And just because you only done it for, the food was only banned in 14 prefectures don't mean the other 35 weren't incredibly radioactive also, because they were, because we have the numbers. We can quantify those assertions we have many, many times. But like when we build these back black bags, right, we should put these people in it. And then fill it up with radioactive fallout. Think about it. So yeah, you can do this right around the entire planet. And there's still bags left over from Fukushima, which was only 3% of the land that cleaned up. They never actually cleaned it up anything. This is only topsoil. A couple of centimeters of the topsoil. Centimeters. Not inches. Not even inches, but centimeters. They totally look like everyday people, right? But, but they're not. So if you took all the bags from Fukushima and, and spread them out on a highway that ran right around the entire planet, you still got bags left over, and that was only 3%. And yet these people think that nuclear is clean and green and too cheap to meter. Or that's what they tell you when they... They tell your schools, and they tell you, well, you get your universities to regurgitate those narratives. The Nuclear Energy Agency. And they're just a lobbying group for the nuclear industry, right? They don't give a frig what, you, what you, the company's made up of. The long as you're promoting nuclear, they're there to promote you and help you succeed. Because nuclear is... It's that evil now that it has destroyed the future of humanity, 8 million species. To this end, the creation of the joint uh, RWMCCDLM focus group was endorsed to provide recommendations how to integrate radioactive waste management and decommissioning aspects of advanced reactors and small modular reactors. So they're looking, like they don't even have 
applications into the regulatory agencies for licenses for small modular reactors, which means you're 20, 25, 30 years down the pipeline, but yet they're making policies for something that doesn't exist. Like, whoa, what are you doing? How can you make policies for something that don't exist? Because you can't quantify, right, their policy because it doesn't exist yet. I'm just saying. But. but if uh, they should go right on all of the bags that Dana is wrong, and then I'll believe them. How about that? Go right on the 30 million one ton bags that Dana is categorically wrong. You're wrong, Dana. And uh, We'd like to thank Charlie. Charlie's the sponsor behind all of these bags. If it wasn't for Charlie, we wouldn't have all these pictures. Come down, Charlie, to Yoshida Mashata. Talk you all about all of misinformation. Washington Post a report claims the country is possible days away from having suffering sufficient material for a nuclear weapon. Oh, yeah, man. let me go backwards. Iran reportedly, now they just attacked Iran from two hours away. It took, it took their rockets two hours to get to Iran. It doesn't sound, and they're only traveling about 200 miles per hour. So the military could have chased down every one of them if they wanted to. But they needed another boogeyman. See, this is a more sophisticated boogeyman than October the 7th, right? And so they fired 300 of these very, very, very slow compared to the conventional rockets. Rockets that took two hours to get to Israel. And now Israel can use that as justification now to, to, to start a war. I can't, you know, you're talking about eight million people in the Iranian military. Eight million. They're not gonna win a conventional war against well, Israel can't win a war anyway, right? It can't fight against somebody with 4,000 tanks and jet fighters and drones and, and Navy ships and and artillery and everything else. They can't fight against their equal. It's easy to slaughter somebody, you know, shoot fish in a barrel, because that's what the Palestinians are, the Gaza is, right? But they, they want to go fight against their country that actually got weapons. They're not going to win that war. Right, because their whole legacy right, is based up on this fictional conflict where they have, they're the fourth biggest weapons producer. And so they're, they're used to using their Palestinians as test subjects on their weapons, right? But if the shoe was on the other foot, Israel can't survive it. They're not used to fighting somebody that fights back. Right, that has equal armies, right? They, they just couldn't do it. They're only used to being a bully. They're not used to being an adversary. Washington Post report claims that the country is possibly days of... I mean, what do you mean Washington Post report? Like, it's, it's such a bizarre statement. And we've been listening to this rhetoric for, what, 20 years? Oh, they're just a week away. For 20 years, every other day, they got that statement. But yet, 20 years later, they still haven't got one. But the Iranian response for the killing could come within the next... Now, they did. They, this was ob obviously what's going on with Iran is scripted. If you're going to shoot, uh, you know, 100 pound of TNT from two hours away, you're not telegraphing it at all, are you? But now you can use it as the same justification as, as the false flag of October the 7th, right? When... These fighters came across the border unopposed for many, many, many hours. And if you look it up in my video, I actually done presentation, provided documentation for those assertions. And so every street should be filled up with one ton bags of radiation because every nuclear power plant is splitting atoms into the ecosystem. And so we're contaminating the whole ecosystem 24 hours a day for 80 years now. And if you, if you go back, right, you can see 
the decline of the species post nuclear industry. Once the industry started, you can see the immediate effects upon the species and humanity. The cancer clusters or the cancer epidemic began in the very early 70s after a couple of decades of radioactive fallout. It was, it was, it was, you can see, you will see the pattern of it progressing. And by the early 70s, then you see it's an epidemic, but it was also an epidemic of heart problems and liver problems and lung problems. And think about the arrogance, the incredible hubris, the Jerusalem Post. Health effects of uranium nuclear strike on Israel, some key insight. Health effects of a nuclear strike, they're not fear mongering at all, are they? Israeli hackers have already threatened to disrupt Iran's cyber infrastructure tonight. Well, if they're able to do it that quick, then that's mean they've been doing it for a long time. They're doing it somewhere else, too, doesn't it? That's pretty despicable, man. you got to be pretty despicable to do something like that. That's your job. However, the primary threat from Iran stems from its anticipated nuclear capabilities. Anticipated. Well, Israel got, what, 70 nuclear weapons or something. Anticipated nuclear, again, my goodness. Every nuclear power plant is a biological weapon. Every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, except for a very few, which are in cities or something. And every nuclear power plant, if you that got farms around it, uh, should be shut down. Then you get rid of all nuclear power, right? Because almost every nuclear power plant, you can't have nuclear weapons without nuclear power. You can't maintain the nuclear weapons without nuclear power plants because you need tritium. The possibilities of a nuclear attack is not far off. See, this is just, it's not only speculation, it's just unconscionable fear mongering. The possibility of a nuclear, so what they're saying is as soon as Iran creates a nuclear weapon, they're immediately going to attack uh, Israel. And then South Korea and the United States were saying the same thing about North Korea. Oh, if it gets a nuclear weapon, that's it. They're going to use it right away. They're going to light that sucker. They're going to smoke that weapon right into your country and get you. So the nuclear industry is a disgusting, despicable, parasitic industry of people, right? They really are the most vile people you'll ever come across. And they're... They're, they're wrecking the, um, the social economies worldwide with these kinds of rhetorics. What happened to the body? What happens to the body after a nuclear attack when exposed to nuclear radiation? And they, they like normally they like to say, "Well, we don't know, right?" But of course, they've got done. They studied every species on the planet. They annihilated everything with radiation, including your loved ones in the hospitals. When exposed to nuclear radiation, human body cells suffer damage to the genetic material, the DNA. This damage can occur either, well, it destroys the cells, the chromosomes, the DNA. It destroys, destroys your blood. Your, it makes you produce more white blood cells than red blood cells. You have less nutrition, less oxygen. Through the breaking of the DNA or indirectly through the creation of toxic free radicals that cause oxidative oxidative damage to the DNA. If the damage is limited to one or two DNA strands, the cell can potentially repair itself. Well, it can't be damaged limited to one or two cells because it pulses energy at the speed of light every second. So it destroys everything. If both strands are damaged, the injury is severe, disrupting cell division, leading to the creation of defective cells. So this is even more important when you put insects and birds small animals and mammals into that equation. Now, now it's catastrophic. The cell commits suicide because the radiation triggers signals that accelerate DNA breakage, leading to the cell's rapid death. So think about Fukushima, where you covered the whole country in radioactive fallout, and America and Canada. Over a month to years following the exposures, complications can arise in small blood vessels due to the damage to the vascular cells. And initial symptoms include fatigue, vomiting, abdominal pains, 
but like a lot of these symptoms are passed off as just common cold. But your immune system now is if you're if you're getting significant doses, then your immune system is compromised. So you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. And so we should take all the one-ton bags of radiation and stack them around nuclear plants to shield the farms, right? That's what I was trying to do with that picture. The digestive system is also affected by radiation. The cell lining the digestive tract are destroyed. Destroyed. They're destroyed. And without new cells from the bone marrow, because you have, you're mutating the stem cells in your skeleton, Ulcers can develop along the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines. And then you're throwing up blood, and blood is in your stool or in your excrements. That's very, very important, whether that statement there. And this leads to bacterial overgrowth, lethal infections, along with loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pains, dehydration, weight loss bloody diarrhea and radi radiation levels above 30 grades can cause death within a few days and what are you talking about high doses you're getting that from the fuel rods right and levels above 100 grades can cause death within hours well what happens is you only need three grades basically and your organ got such a dose it starts melting your organs will start melting and then you're, you're guaranteed to die, depending on the dose you're getting. If you get 10, 15 sieverts, you're going to die within that day minimum. And so the, the numbers they're talking about are higher than the real numbers by far. And so what we should be taking, first off, we should close down every nuclear power plant that's surrounded by farms. And then... Every, wherever the food goes, we should go and do studies on the victims that were eating that food. So we should go look for heart problems, liver problems, like large, large uh, groups of people with heart problems, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary. We'll see a incredible increase of autism and diabetes and Down syndrome, which are the first studies they're going to do after nuclear accident, by the way. And we should be significantly worried about Alzheimer's and dementia and doing studies on that, wherever that food went from the farms around nuclear power plants. A few years ago, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a radiation treatment developed in Israel derived from placentias of birthing women. This treatment enabled the body to produce new healthy blood or replace... Uh, to reproduce new healthy blood cells in place of those damaged by nuclear radiation. Well, ain't that the interesting statement? Is that why they're taking all the bodies, they're killing all the babies and everything in the hospitals, the Israelis, to get their hands on that material? It blows my mind that every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms. It just blows my mind. Because the fuel pools are hemorrhaging, splitting radiation, so that's hemorrhaged into the ecosystem 24 hours a day. It absolutely is unconscionable that that was able to happen. And, and it happened because their universities, their school of mass destruction, as you should call them, and the, the media, the hateful media, have betrayed us so much. An innovative treatment from Israel, known as the PLXR18, is designed for the treatment of severe radiation injuries in the event of a nuclear attack. The research and development were conducted on animals, <laughs> aka Palestinian children, as clinical trials involving nuclear radiation on humans are prohibited. Well, ain't that, well, well the animal's kidneys is 90% more efficient than a human that removing radiation from the body. There's I have no doubt they're doing it on Palestinians. And I know we talked about it years ago about that, actually. 
right, because it did come out that they were using radiation on them, particularly the depleted uranium munitions. And they would take the organs out of the victims and then they would release the body back to the Palestinians. And that made big news cycles, right? The treatment is made from the percentages of birthing women which undergo a special process resulting in an injectable solution. The ejection is administered into the muscle and must be given within 96 hours after exposure to nuclear radiation. And it facilitates the production of new types of blood cells. Dirty, disgusting. So they probably got baby mills out there to get their hands on that stuff. The treatment is made from evil. See, if you get rid of nuclear industry, then you wouldn't have to worry about this stuff, destroying all the birds and insects, mammals and animals in increments for the last 80 years, right? <coughs> Congress, protect patients and enact the Nuclear Medicine Clarification Act. Protect. This is the strangest story imaginable. Uh, and this highlights a huge amount of issues in the nuclear industry, in the hospitals. If a preventable error that might cause harm occurs during medical care, should there be transparency? This should scare you. Or should the incident be swept under the rug? A rule proposed by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission leans towards the latter, sweep it under the rug. At issue is a proposed rule by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission regarding when uh, clini clinicians need to report, when doctors need to report cases of patients who are unintentionally exposed the high levels of radiation due to misadministered radioactive drugs. Misadministered radioactive drugs, which are often used to help detect and treat diseases. These faulty, these faulty injections called extravasations deposit radioactivity at the injection site rather than into the bloodstream as intended. We're putting radiation directly into the bloodstream is not going to cause you any issues, really. But putting it in, missing that is going to cause the, the harm. <laughs> like, it's there's such a disconnect there in the truth, isn't it? Well, the best way to get it into your bloodstream is have all nuclear power plants surrounded by farms, right? That's the quickest way to get it in. Have nuclear accidents and just tell you it's like a banana and a potato chip so that everybody gets sick. This loophole means that not only is the non-regulatory commission never told about the errors, but they can also be kept from the patients. So the loophole means you don't have to tell the victims. The commission's proposal, proposed rule to address the loophole is extraordinarily weak. Rather than a simple objective reporting criteria Based on the severity of the episode, it requires patients, the victims, to prove they were injured before reporting could occur. So unless the victims conjure up the evidence, then it doesn't have to be reported. Try to wrap your mind around that statement. First off, like it should never, ever, under any circumstances, be used in the hospital. Anthropogenic man radiation should never, ever, under any circumstances, be injected into humans or animals. It's a complete genocide. It's sadistic to do that. And after all of these decades and decades and decades and just hundreds of millions of people brutally, viciously killed. They still haven't got it to work. But don't worry, they're getting close. Yeah, I got to kill a couple more people. We'll get it then, they says. It requires patients to prove they were injured. This subjective standard would place enormous burdens on a patient who might not recognize the symptoms of an extra vexation and chalk them up to something else rather than on the the doctors or the hospitals. 
who should have the tools and training to perform the procedures properly. The rule is a, this rule is the product of a bureaucracy captured by the industry it regulates and is designed to preserve the status quotas. We are pleased that lawmakers in Congress are proposing responsible legislation to correct this unjustifiable situation. And the Nuclear Medicine Clarification Act, like this is one of the scariest stories conceivable what we're talking about right here. This really is a nightmare story, right? They're not evil at all. They're just insane. What we're talking about there is actually the definition of insane, right? That you can stick nuclear into people, and if you screw up, oh, well, too bad. We don't have to report it. We're special scumbags. They're the entitled lot, right? And where it's okay to poison you because that's called science. I I gotta put that story somewhere so I can find it later. My apologies. <coughs> Or to be born on Sugar Mountain. La la la. Here we go. Nuclear power pros and cons debated. Really? This is a Jessica lovering. I really dislike her. She's a complete liar. A very dishonest person on top of that. Co-founder and ex-executive director of the pro-nuclear Good Energy Collective. The Good Energy Collective. What do you think you give them that types of names? Because, you know, it's not good. Would that have anything to do with it? Like such a strange, right, the Good Energy Collective. So that she can sm say to her friends, she's actually not a really a monster. She's actually a good person. But I'm sure her friends know better. You can't hide it just because you're a woman. The event was presented by the Steamboat Institute in partnership uh, with CMU Civic Forum and CMU Land and Energy Management Club. Oh, man. Why don't you go to Fukushima and manage the 30 million one-ton bags? Loving Lovering, also a senior visiting fellow. She's a senior visiting fellow. <laughs> they got to give you these fancy titles so you, you feel good about yourself. With the fastest path to zero initiative at the University of Michigan. So nuclear power is the largest source of carbon-free power in the country. Oh, that's great. She should go down to Fukushima and write on the 30 million one-ton bags that is carbon-free. Like, anybody that reg is educated and regurgitate the narrative carbon-free, no bet, they know what they're doing. They know it's a complete lie. The biggest polluter is nuclear. Nuclear is your mortal nightmare. As well as actually your immortal, immortal nightmare. But she said renewable energy isn't deployed fast enough. So the scumbag piece of shit said nuclear wasn't deployed being deployed fast enough. And that's where nuclear power can help. Can play an important role in maintaining the balance between energy supply and demand and address the intermittent nature of renewables. We hear that narrative so many times. You just want to grab their hair and swing them out into a pond or something. Because uh, geothermal can be built immediately that, that year and be up and running. And it doesn't need any storage. It runs 24 hours a day. There's no emissions. It really is carbon free. And renewable projects take up a lot of land. Oh, really? Nuclear doesn't take up a lot of land? 
And I hear that argument all the time, which, and this is what they do, right? They have a couple of these narratives that they use, and they just keep regurgitating the exact same narrative over and over and over and over. Well, let me see, Fukushima, Okay, it's so hard to imagine a people eat to exist. We've been storm for what two weeks now. Here, you should hear it right now. And yesterday was insane. As busting rain all day long. But heavy winds, even right now, heavy winds, and all week it's gonna be heavy friggin' winds. I'm hoping to get a break with the weather. We want to get try to get the boat out on the ocean. Let me show you some real pictures of Fukushima. So you can see why we got all these pictures tonight. The thing with nuclear is um, it's only good at being evil. That's Nuclear has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Here's here's some, some there, now there's 105,000 of these one ton bags, 105,000 sites. I don't know if you can hear the wind, but this the last two weeks it hasn't stopped blowing. So there was a uh, 30 million one-ton bags. Let me bring that up for you so you can go read that story. I screwed that up to that. Yeah, but here you go. Officials at the Ministry of Environment said up to 30 million tons of radioactive waste will need to be moved. Up to 30 million one-ton bags. So when you see my pictures like this, or say like like this, that's, that's the story we're, we're trying to get into people's consciousness of how friggin' silly this industry actually is. And how sinister the industry actually is. And some of it, like, because every, every kilogram is a dirty bomb, right? You should be protecting it so that terrorists slash nuclear scientists don't get it and use it against us. I think all nuclear scientists should have to wear a special hat so people can cross the street when you see them or something. Shop selling food from Fukushima whole anniversary for tasting offered for sake, whiskey, and ramen from the nuclear wasteland. These, these are crazy people, man. So they're in a nuclear wasteland and they're growing food in a nuclear wasteland and selling it. And they're they're just completely incompetent, right? And they dress up like cartoon characters and some of that justifies being monsters. I, I don't understand it. We will do our we will do our best to get people to know about Fukushima to become fans of the nuclear wasteland. And then they show you all the food. Food looks wonderful, but you can't smell radiation. You can't see it. You can't hear it. Like one time bags, you can see it, right? But generally, you can't see it or smell it or hear it or taste it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it or perceive it. <sighs> My goodness. I remind people to stay on subject. I risk it all. So, f lesson from Fukushima Generation Memorial Museum in Futaba marks 13 years since the 311 disaster. And this is a story of just stupid. Welcome to stupid. Oh, we got a flat earther, do we? 
It's flat like the moon, flat like the stars, flat like the sun, is it? Flat like all the meteorites up in the skies. There is no skies. Everything's flat, you know. Uh, do me a favor. Don't do that here. Located a mere 2.5 miles from Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Plant is the town of Futaba. The museum has been dedicated to educating visitors and conveying the experience of those affected by the earthquake tsunami and nuclear crisis. Well, the reason they're not—they never left here because of the earthquake or tsunami. They left here because of the the nuclear meltdown, right? <sighs> I work so hard to do these shows, and then. And then people come in and, and they, they just put all these distractions, right? And they don't work like a fucking dog like I have for all these decades to try to do something good. And that's usually the industry disguised as somebody else, right? I'm just going to start putting people in time out. If they keep doing it, then they're just going to get themselves blocked. I don't know why people do that to me. Like, I work so fucking hard to have a conversation. Those of, us, those of us who live in Fukushima know that every day we take for granted may not come tomorrow. It also functions as a memorial for victims and survivors. This is the museum. $50 million in a ghost town museum. It provides a space for reflection and remembrance for those who lost their lives or were displaced by the events. I hope that Fukushima will become better known and that once the solitary... Uh, the solitary landscape will be filled with plenty of buildings and become more vibrant. Well, well, it's a nuclear wasteland, though. Why would you want to bring people back to a nuclear wasteland, you fucking moron? You, you, you murderer? You, you dummy? That's the stories the media runs, though, right? We got a rather interesting story there. I'm just going to find it for you. I take a few moments. We'll get. I know roughly where it's to. It's in my pile, which means I got a lot of scrolling. Uh, we're getting there. We'll get there. To go with this story because this is an important story. And Futabar, of course, everybody abandoned Futabar. They left the uh, Alzheimer's and dementia patients at the hospital. The nurses and the and the brave doctors and ran away. I left them to wander away. Lots of them just died because they had no one to help them. It was ninety one, was it, or something of them? And they just left them behind because it's like a banana on a potato chip, walking in the sunshine and getting on an airplane and climbing mountains. Right there, we go. So I need that story to tell the rest of it. The museum collection comprised approximately 280,000 items. 280,000 items. Related to the earthquake and the nuclear disaster. 280,000 items at this $50 million museum. Uh, within sight of uh, ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns in a community where nobody lives. Okay. So go back to 2019, many of the 42 entities tossed out records from the 2011 quake. 
And these are boxes of the records of people that participated after the nuclear meltdown. So this is the most important stories imaginable. They didn't have any room for that. The municipalities in Iwati, Miyati, Fukushima prefectures reported throwing out the records. Cardboard boxes containing official documents related to the 2011 earthquake and tsunami were temporarily kept. But they got all kinds of abandoned government buildings there. They could have stored it at. The documents that have already been discharged included notifications from the central government and list of names of volunteers. The Miyagi prefecture said, well, the preservation period expired, unlike nuclear. Lydia Village in Fukushima prefecture said, we don't have space to preserve all the documents. But you had $50 million to build a museum in a nuclear wasteland. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? It's a, that's such a heartbreaking story. Lessons for Future Generation Memorial Museum in Futabar. $50 million for a museum in a nuclear wasteland. They call it difficult to return, but it's a nuclear wasteland. The town of Futaba, which co-hosts the Fukushima Daiichi plant, began locating public disaster housings to returnees in October 2022. Locating public disaster housing, public disaster housings to returnees in 2022. But as March the 1st, 2024, the town's population stood at just 102 people, a fraction of the pre-disaster figure of 7,140, and roughly 60% or 60 of the 100 people are from other areas, not from the original Futabar. So 40 of them apparently are from, are very gullible or have been manipulated or, or impoverished and are manipulated and deceived and coerced into going back into the nuclear wasteland. So 60% of the current residents are from other areas. So in other words, they're employees at the nuclear meltdown. They're not scientists or academics because they're not going to Fukushima. And remember these pictures, these... They brought in a bunch of artists into the nuclear wasteland to paint a bunch of inspiring slogans and pictures. Remember that? We covered it back in a few years back, three or four years ago. March 11, 2011. Then March 11, 2021. And March 11, and that's the date, apparently, of the accident. And March 11, 2031 is the next time they'll be back there or something. Together, remember that we covered that. I don't know how long ago it was four or five years ago or something. Together in a nuclear wasteland, yay! Right, and then invoking that children should go back to the nuclear wasteland, the ultimate betrayal, isn't it? There's a fire truck destroyed. Yeah, but what about the records? What about the records? from a decade of volunteers and government records of the victims. He threw all that away and kept a fire truck. Fourteen forty six. Two thousand eleven, three eleven, fourteen forty six. And this is a remember that model? I remember when he first inaugurated that shithole museum. And this was a replica of Fukushima. They got on display there. A model they got commissioned some engineering company to build. It it looks a lot different today, don't it? Everything is cemented. But ultimately this is Japan. Well, just because the community the abandoned communities are not full of one ton bags don't mean they shouldn't be. What a stupid industry, man. What an idiot industry. And so going to the nuclear wasteland, going to a museum, and bowing your head somehow makes it okay to poison everybody with the food from 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for over a decade. Such, such dishonest people. We can't have a future with these types of people. That's your future right there, huh?
Radioactive Waste International Atomic Energy Agency confirms water discharge from the ruined nuclear plant meets safety standards. Like, what are you talking about? Water from a nuclear meltdown meets the safety standards. It's such a crazy story, isn't it? Let's destroy everything and then pretend that we're good people. That's what the nuclear industry is good at. So, Ral Ralphiel Grossi, the official story from him is there's no m nuclear meltdowns. That nothing got out of the reactors, and, and the media backs it up by pretending they're in the building, and everybody's out to pretending this doesn't matter. Everybody's out to living in a fantasy. Not everybody. If you're here, you're not. But w uh, at what point do we fight for a future? What point do we fight for everybody and the eight million species? What at what point? Because we don't have a right to stop, right? Let's get be very clear about that. We're not doing this because it's fucking easy. There's nothing easy here. Well, at least not what I'm doing. There's nothing easy about what I'm doing, I can tell you that much. I work like a fucking dog. So that hopefully the world can have a future. Why the industry and the media sabotages everything we try. And the pro-nuclear community are sitting there waiting for some me to say something or or do something so that they can use it as a weapon against us. Right? They're probably getting $25 an hour to sit there and monitor me and look for ways to stop us from having a future. That's what their job is. But they think they're on the, the good side because they're so fucking stupid. They're so well brainwashed that they don't understand that they're morons for doing what they're doing, right? So, you know, like, when you ban the food from... 14 prefectures by 55 countries for over a decade and you pick up 30 million one-ton bags but you still grow food right alongside the millions of one-ton bags and ship it to market okay. I, th this is just not acceptable this is, there's nothing rational about it there's nothing logic about it how can we have a a future when the media is insisting that it's like a banana and a potato chip and walk in the sunshine, when it has none of those attributes. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of pundits out there, right? This, these are the same people, Stinkfoot. And he's supposed to be coming to get me. His job is to attack me. He's a friend of Tokyo, apparently, according to Calm Down Charlie. Uh, you shoot him a shot of Tokyo Bureau. In Detroit, or Chicago, rather, same thing, I guess. So his job is to uh, attack me and and say, well, no, Dana, it's like a banana. Uh, it's like a potato chip. Yes, Dana, they're actually in the building, Dana. They're in the fuel pool at the top of the building, Dana. That's Thunderfoot's job, right? His job is to defend the industry. That's his job. That's what it lo used to look like. That's what it looks like now. And that's his uh, twin brother, the shoe bomber. And that's him in drag. You know, the radiation covered the entire planet in 19.5 days. Here's another model from France at a million to 10 million atoms of cesium-137. And this model was based on a total of 30 days. But I'm going to stop the model at 20 days, I think it is. Yeah, right around here. And it starts again. So at 20 days, the model showed a million, 10 million atoms covering the entire planet at cesium-137. And cesium-137 pulses energy 600 feet every second. So you, you got the entire planet 
pulsing energy almost at the speed of light. And if you've got something that pulses energy at the speed of light, is it going to be cold or hot? Because I guarantee it's not going to be cold. Is it going to have any adverse effects on the bacteria and the fungus, the, the bases of the eco chain? Because you can't have plants or trees or anything else without bacteria and fungus. Woo! Uh, that was a tough sneeze that time. So the building looks like that. But they say they're on the top of it getting a few little pool. And any other narrative besides their narrative is banned. Nobody's allowed to have a debate because they own it all. And so when they have a debate, they have like the controlled opposition. They'll have Arnie Gunnison or Helen Calicott or Christopher Busby or Rod Adams or Lake Barrett or whatever. They'll have their control opposition there. And their job is to tell you the same song and dance you've been listening to for 80 years, the propaganda from your hateful media. Well, some people say 60 million one ton. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So there's about 60 million tons. Sorry. So this story here is crazy, one of the most crazy stories you're going to ever hear. 34,200 tons of radioactive sewage sludge was kept in Kanto, which is Tokyo area, 12 years after Fukushima. 32,000 tons, 32,000 one-ton bags in the Kanto region. Emitted from the Fukushima nuclear disaster is kept in storage by a major local body in the Kanto region, but which is 240 kilometers away. Why are they keeping it there? And look at the containers that they're using. Why, why are they keeping it there? Which is Tokyo. Um, hang on, I'll get there. Oh, and so this is, they burnt the sewage, and the containers are full of the ash. The ash is so radioactive, they can't get rid of it. And there's 32,000 tons of radioactive ash from burning the sewage. And where does the sewage come from? <laughs> Comes from the victims internal, right? They excrete it, that's their their stooge and their urine, right? So it goes to the sewage. It's so radioactive that they burn it, which releases a huge amount of radiation into the environment because you can't destroy radiation. But the ash left over is so radioactive they can't get rid of that. And we've covered stories where they claim that the radiation doesn't go up in the smoke. When you burn it, it stays in the ash. We've, we've covered those stories from the major media, by the way, which is 100% crazy talk. It's crazy talk. You're burning something at 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, you're going to suggest that radiation, which is in the shape of atoms, you can put 200 million atoms ahead of a needle, it's so heavy it's going to stay in the ash. You can put 200 million atoms ahead of a needle, you can't see it. And so you're going to suggest those atoms will stay there because they're heavy. This, this is the insanity of nuclear. Nuclear needs to go, because if it doesn't, you're, you're going. The massive tainted, and that's a great word there, by the way, massive, is a year's worth of ordinary burned sludge ash generated in Tokyo's 23 wards has partially been kept as incinerated ash. What do you mean partially been kept? How else can you keep it? which is way more than what you're looking at there. A year's worth of the burned sludge ash. Well, you might have dehydrated and released that much radiation into the ecosystem before you tried to burn it too, right? 
is pretty, uh, they're pretty evil. You can't put anything past them. Due to difficulties in obtaining local understanding for landfill disposal of radioactive waste in harbors, forests, and mountains, some of the waste is nowhere to go even 12 years on. So let me try that again. So due to the difficulties in obtaining local understanding for landfill disposal of radioactive waste. So look, what are you talking about? Where would you want to put radioactive waste in local landfills or harbors or forests and mountains? Like, what are you talking about? You sadistic, demented, hateful scum. And so 32,000 tons is only a fraction of what you're seeing there is, is a fraction of that 32,000, would be a fraction of 32,000. We're talking about an absurd amount of ash. So whatever they burnt would have released at least 70% more radiation back into the ecosystem. But this, this, whole, this whole sentence right there, due to difficulties in obtaining local understanding for landfill disposal of radioactive waste in harbors. So that's not a landfill disposal if you're dumping it in the harbors. Where would you put radiation in the forest in your mountains for you piece of shit? And some of the waste is nowhere to go even 12 years on because you've been doing that apparently for 12 years. And if you give them a chance, they're going to burn all the nuclear waste they got in Fukushima. The massive, radioactive, massive, massive, tainted. You can't call it tainted. It's too radioactive to get rid of. Then it's not tainted, you piece of shit. Waste. The, the industry really is just scum, right? The, the journalist basically is just a fucking scumbag. This... If somebody meets somebody, they tell me they're a journalist, they say, well, what do you want, scumbag? It's not I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just being honest, right? The years were, because that's just the way it is with me, right? If you're a scumbag, that's what I'm going to call you. A year's worth of ordinary burned sludge ash, ash has partially been kept as incinerated ash. Partially. Partially. Well, they don't tell you what else is, what, what's the other part of that equation? What do you mean partially? Kept as incinerated ash. Due to the difficulties in obtaining local understanding for landfill disposal of radioactive nuclear waste in harbors, forests, and mountains. Why, why would you, what do you mean disposal? Like, I think it's just... Because there's no laws, they got to get the understanding of the community. They got to get the community. So yeah, go ahead and poison everything we got. The findings came after a piece of shit media queried major local governments in five prefectures in Kanto region, which is Tokyo, and other sources about radioactivity contaminated sewage sludge accumulated. I know, like we got a story there, and I don't know where it's too off the top of my head, unfortunately. Where they got 50,000 tons of sewage. I'm sorry. Hang on. Wait, wait a sec. See if I can find it. Not sewage, but uh, sediment from the water reclamation facilities. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to find it. So I don't know what to search. Let me do a quick look here. I got it there, but I can't remember where it's to, because I haven't recalled, recalled it in a little while. And it was uh, 50,000 tons. They wanted TEPCO to take it and deal with it in the city because it was too radio. It was water sediment, water um, 
Yeah, the water sediment from the filtration system of the fresh water. So when you take the water from the lake, it has sediment, right? So they'll filter that out, pump the water into the community, into the houses, and then the sediment is kept in one-ton bags. And they had 50,000 one-ton bags of that was so radioactive they couldn't get rid of. So they want TEPCO to take it, which meant that everybody was drinking the water would have got brutal radiation. And but like the stories we're talking about now is the shit, the other side of it with the sewage. When it comes out, you you take it in. Now when it comes out, you have radioactive sewage. You can't get rid of that. Even the garbage is radioactive. You can't get rid of the ash from that. In May 2011, two months after the disaster, radioactive cesium was detected in the sewage sludge in Fukushima Prefecture. I got a whole folder in it, but I don't know if I'll find it. Um, I got another one there, hang on. So here's another one. Think about this side of the story. Is the government trying to contaminate every region of Japan by burning radioactive debris? And if everyone is contaminated in a relative sense, nobody is? There's 300 times more radiation released into the atmosphere from burning radioactive debris than claimed by the government. Fukushima will start burning radioactive waste at 100,000 becquels a kilogram to be incinerated, and 1 billion, this is what they're doing with their, all their radioactive waste, is burning it. Not all of it, but a, a revolting amount of it. Japan's sacred promise with the U.S. to burn plutonium Fukushima plant will burn radioactive waste. Incinerators run around the clock, include building materials and clothes. They claimed they were burning 7,000 paper suits a day. Because we were, we were, for weeks we were picking on them, wondering what they were doing with the 7,000 paper suits that they said they were using every day, right? And there's no 7,000 people at Fukushima site back in those days. Because the reactors detonated and threw fuel rods and pellets all over the site. So that you couldn't survive there. This prompt inspections of sewage and other local bodies in the Kanto region. And authorities took measures such as keeping highly contaminated sludge, not tainted, highly contaminated sludge within their local sewage facilities. Which is insane, right? Emerged that Yokohama municipal government south of Tokyo kept approximately 26,000 tons of radioactive contaminated waste within its sewage facilities and incinerated sludge ash as of the end of February 2023. While uh, Kawasaki municipal government also in Kanagawa prefecture kept 3,500 tons of such waste ash nuclear ash in the same form. And as the radioactive ash, aka radioactive cesium, radioactive cesium, well you can't have radioactive cesium without radioactive curium, radioactive plutonium, radioactive americium, radioactive neptunium. In areas surrounding the facilities and locations hosting the radioactive nuclear ash from these cities, the radiation exposure doses below the annual limit of one millisiever for the general public. Like, what are you talking about? You can't, like, we're talking about physical atoms. That's, and to measure it in millisieverts, which is a thousand microsieverts, by the way, is just, that's still a massive dose of. But that's not how you would measure because they can't contain it. Like the ashes from the incinerators were being dumped where they were going to have the Olympic seed. Where the, they were going to have these, uh, like, I can't remember what it was, the rowing uh, the rowing races and stuff like that, Olympic rowing. And the seeding that they had 
underneath it is where they had dumped the radioactive ash. But it turned up not. It turned up they didn't use that area because of COVID, right? But the the seeding area, they had the radioactive ash dumped underground. It was not in bags or something. And so every time it rained, it would wash it out into the area where they were going to have uh, the rowing races. Every time it rains in Japan, the whole country is washing ash into all the drinking water. Is re-liberating it back into the ecosystem, the environment, and is evaporating up into the sky, the radiation, and also into the entire ocean. The entire country is radioactive, and all the the plants are producing radioactive pollen on top of that. And the radiation we're talking about is this is nasty stuff we're talking about. And this is what every nuclear plant should look like. There should never be any farms around nuclear power plants. This is unhinged to have farms around nuclear power plants. It's just unhinged because you can't contain the radiation because the fuel pools are still splitting atoms. And the amount we're talking about from a fuel pool is catastrophic to everything we're replicating cells worldwide. These plumes are not just isolated to the local areas. They're, they're your biggest nightmare, and you're going to have to deal with it. Like it or lump it, you're going to have to deal with it. While the Kawasaki government plans to entirely move the tainted ash, going to move all that ash, the tainted ash, the, you know, the highly radioactive ash, they're calling tainted, has no prospects of finishing the disposal of its radioactive ash. If it was tainted, it would be no problem to get rid of it. So it's not tainted. And using the word tainted, anybody that, any journalist that uses the word tainted in this context should get to, should lose their degree immediately and should be ostracized from society, like, you know, in a jail cell. The national government plans to place their waste, this waste under long-term management, by setting up treatment facilities, treatment facilities, you can't treat it, the state owned forest and other sites in accordance with the special measures law on radioactive contamination response. So this is a law that allows them to dump it in your lakes, rivers, and streams, no doubt. However, the plan remains up in the air as the candidate sites have not been finalized due to protests from smart people and other factors. This is an industry that has no right to exist. It should never, ever, ever, ever got to this stage. They knew it back in the 50s that this industry had no right to exist. But the scumbag that they are. Meanwhile, Tokyo, Satama, Kanagawa prefectures responded to the survey that they have finished disposing of all radioactive sewage sludge under their control, and the cities also answered the same. Based on the peak amount of radioactive sludge kept by the local bodies, it is estimated that they had disposed of at least 120,000 120, tons of nuclear waste sewage. 120,000. Uh, would be like 150 pictures like that, what they're talking about. Uh, who knows what they mean by disposed of? Dumped it into your rivers, your lakes, your streams. And Yahoo's coming out with stories that are old and regularly for the last couple of weeks. The story was 2023 by no less than Mary Yamaguchi. I didn't realize that I came back and I, I'd done it, but I didn't read the date on it, right? But then I start realizing, wait a second, this is not a new story. So him sitting there eating sushi means that the 30 million one-ton bags of radioactive fallout don't matter because he sat there and ate some sushi 
And so therefore, none of the 30 million one-ton bags means anything anymore. Well, isn't that, isn't that cute? Isn't that just grand? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? Do my Stevie Wonder imitation here. <laughs> uh, I got a few ops. Let's play some music. I guess it's that time of night. Mark uh, R and Nancy R donated fifty last week. Thank you so much. Stephen Young donated 50, and hugs for everybody. Oh, that's the wrong one, hang on. Let me check the volume. Let me check the volume. <clears throat> Let me see here, I think I forgot something. What a struggle it is. I'm just I'm focused on trying to keep this whole operation moving forward. I'm trying to keep the story alive 24 days a month or something. Coming here with these videos. We picked up. Uh, I picked up uh, a water separator, a lubricator for the compressor, because they're usually very, very expensive, right? And uh, we got a decent price on that. And um, for the grinder, uh, which I got really lucky on. I won't buy nothing unless it's on sale anyway. And I got a long-needed, desperate uh, battery tester. And so it has a heating element. I got that for $20, by the way, which is ridiculously cheap, brand new. And so you, you hold down the testing button and it heats up an element and that draws on your battery, right? And then you can ascertain how kind of shape your battery's in and it has, it's really good. So I went through all my batteries. Weekend, uh, got a great deal on flashlights because I got none anymore. The last one I had, I got dropped with a month ago and broke it. And two headlamps, two flashlights for twelve dollars. So that was great. Uh, we got uh, more utility knives for four dollars, which is fantastic. And I guess that's it, isn't it? What do I know? So lately I've been trying to show people that like the whole fleet, I got a big operation, right? And it's, I got to ran into the ground after all these years, you know? Um, and you, can't, you just can't afford to uh, repair everything, right? You can't bring it to the shop to get it done properly. You got to do everything myself, and I shouldn't do anything. I shouldn't have to do anything. Too busy doing this and, and, and that, right? And it's just just kneeling down. Now, thank goodness I got knee pads a couple of weeks ago, and they they literally saved my life. I won't go out and shed that without putting my knee pads on. I, I really, I can't get down. I can't put my knee on the ground. It kills me. Either one of them, right? Song's probably over, I guess, is it? Well, anyway, let's call it a night. Thank you to anybody that was able to contribute. Uh, links are in the description. Summer is up on us. Summer is coming. Spring is coming, and we're a long way off. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Have a great night, a great day tomorrow. Hugs for everybody. And the pump.
poll will close it down. We got 42 votes. Should the world ban United Nations? Absolutely, Dana. And replace them with real people instead of the evil, degenerate scum that the nuclear industry actually is. Have a great night. We'll see everybody on the next show. Take care, folks. <laughs>